Caddis Maximus here. My very first live stream. Keep on getting these messages from YouTube about, you haven't done a live stream. You should really try live streaming. Have you heard about live streaming? Maybe you should consider a live stream. So I figured I'd do a live stream with my toolbox, a small a little electronic test equipment, test tools. This isn't like multimeters, but it's other small miscellaneous stuff. So I figured I would just do a live stream just going through what I have in my electronics test toolbox here. Sorry about the video quality I'm trying to work on. I have a Logitech C920 webcam I'm using right now because I wasn't able to figure out how to use my phone as the web camera. Anyway, I had reviewed this as my little uh, Gar Gar excuse me, Gardner Bender uh, battery tester. I really like it because it's universal. Test this by every type of alkaline battery as well as button cells. What we also have here is a telephone line tester, but this is also a, a tracer, and you can listen as well as uh, check and activate the ring. Something you don't use very often anymore, but I figured I'd I found it at a junk store, and it is American made. The tracing is pretty handy, and pe some people still actually have like DSL internet, which is totally uncompetitive in my area. You can get gigabit internet from cable internet from Comcast, or you can get like 300 kilobit off of DSL. Anyway, I'm using an old Milwaukee toolbox for this. Oh, I can see one comment. So it appears that my live stream is apparently working. I usually pause my videos when I'm trying to think of the next thing to say. So a little bit weird doing a live stream. Anyway, I've got some pieces of paracord in here, just multicolored, just so I can, whenever I'm working on wiring, I can tie them together. What was that? Oh, okay. Tie some wires together, different colors. Makes it a little bit easy if you are working through wiring harnesses. Come on now, camera. Gosh, why won't this camera focus? There it goes. I do need to figure it out. Got a total dissolved solids meter here. This is, tells you the amount of detectable solids in water. I'm not exactly sure how these work. I think it's via it sends a current through the water and or tests the resist. It sends a, a voltage to the water, tests the resistance, and then uses that to determine the total dissolved solids. The next thing here is an old, I have quite a few of these old temperature sensors. I have this old TPI, which probably doesn't work anymore. May not even have a battery in it. I kind of like this one because it has this plastic uh, cover on it. So it still will pick up the air temperature, but prevents air from actually blowing over it. TPI is a okay electronics uh, test equipment manufacturer, but they've kind of fallen to the wayside. I want to have a full table here. I do have some extra soldering tips for my Weller soldering irons. I keep those in there. It's always handy to have these soldering tips because they always seem to wear out. I'm going to have a fun time getting this back. This is yet another electronic uh, or digital temperature gauge. This one's kind of interesting just because it has a fold-out probe, but it's more designed to be in your pocket and be just a little bit more compact, as well as having like min-max and a fold feature. It's a little bit better than the TPI. I have this thing, which actually, <laughs> which is a UV sensor. I actually did a little video about this, and I thought this would be kind of interesting particularly with uh, around high power lamps as well as, you know, outside. What this was designed for is to uh, basically when you're outside on the beach or out in the sun, it's supposed to let you know how much UV you're getting to help prevent you from getting a sunburn, essentially. What else do we have here? We have like a little uh, Bussman fuse tester and fuse puller. I kind of like this one because it ha will reposition to any number of uh, fuse sizes and this has a little green light allowing him to let you know if the see if a fuse is blown then it's an open circuit so when you put the two probes across it'll light the led because the power will go through the led if the fuse is good then a fuse is a piece of wire and it'll have zero resistance so when you test with these probes and the fuse is good the light will not turn on because the power is going through the fuse and not through the led I have one of these things, which is a little USB load tester for testing USB power supplies. This has a couple of high temperature wire round resistors on it. 
they get super duper hot, but I do like that it has like a little power switch on it. Well, it's more useless phone, another useless phone line tester. This allows you to let you know if you get the wiring backwards. I do have some other testers in here. So I have things like this, which is a light bulb socket to power outlet adapter. That thing can be kind of handy. What else do we have in here? We have some old serial bus loop back testers from a long defunct software company, Symantec. Huh. I'm good. I wonder if the camera's a little backwards. These are the ones that did come indeed with the old Norton Utilities. Actually, Norton LifeLock is the consumer products that still exist. All their com Symantec's commercial products like Symantec Antivirus and that type of stuff was all sold to Broadcom. And they ended up just basically shutting down, shutting them down. I have, interestingly, a coaxial cable tester with a little LED on it. I thought that was kind of an interesting little device. What else do I have in here? I have one of these little uh, OBD2 testers. This is a Bluetooth tester, so you use this with your phone. And you get a piece of software, and then you can plug this in. This allows you to wirelessly connect. Although I found it doesn't really support a whole lot of features, particularly compared to a real nice handheld one. This isn't going to do steering angle resets and electric parking brake resets and that type of stuff. But still thought it was kind of handy just because it plugs into the phone. What else do I have in here? I have this thing, which is for crimping onto dip circuits, uh, multi-leg microchips. And it just clips on and then it gives you a whole bunch of terminals to be able to easily access and test. It's something I've never used. But whenever I see stuff like this, I always come pick it up just because uh, they're kind of interesting. What else do I have in here? I have a basic electrical tester. This is a low voltage cal term. So I guess 5 to 50 volts AC or DC. What's interesting is this is a neon bulb. And... It still works with DC, so that must have some kind of circuit in there that chops up the signal. What else do I have in here? I have this little Pomona built-in flashlight. Uh, Lumavolt, this is a one of those inductive electrical testers, so when you put it near an outlet, it'll blink. But I kind of like this one because it had a little flashlight built into it. I've got a variety of these little things, which are... Just outlet testers. The ones with the buttons are for testing GFCI outlets. So you plug it in, you just press the button, and it'll trip the GFCI. I have a couple of different Sperry's here, as well as a Calterm one. It's amazing how many little objects you can fit into a little thing. Here's a red one. I'm not exactly sure what the difference between this Sperry and this Sperry is, besides this one is red. I guess one's a more current generation or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. This one has a model number on it. This one does, this red one may be an older unit. What else do we have in here? Another cheesy, uh, this is a GC version of a telephone line tester. This was actually an old Radio Shack one, and we can see it was, <laughs> they're exactly the same unit. Uh, we got some gender changers. This is a null modem uh, adapter for testing serial ports. You basically don't run into this in, you know, obviously in modern computers, but a lot of uh, like old CNC equipment, that type of stuff, uh, you do run into these types of de serial devices, UPSs, that type of thing. So that's why I still collect all these little loopback testers. I have one of these, which is a kind of an interesting thing. It's both an outlet wiring tester, but it's also called a plug grip. So when you're pulling out or putting in an outlet, it's supposed to provide an additional amount of safety for you to kind of wrench it around. Uh, it's kind of funky. It's something I haven't used. I have a coaxial cable uh, antenna attenuator. Once again, yet another object I've never used. But thought this thing was kind of neat. Never really seen a coaxial attenuator. So decided to throw that in my little box. Something a little handy. This is just a little plug-in switch for a two-prong outlet. Uh, a little infrared, uh, an old Harbor Freight Centec infrared detector. Uh, more outlet switches here. What other junk do I have in here? 
Uh, this is a battery tester, but it just plugs into a cigarette lighter. Thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, at least it's handy. What else do I have? I have these little fiber uh, number labels. So you use these to wrap around wiring. They're fire resistant. And uh, they're always kind of handy to have these things. But they're a little funky to use. And they don't stick on very well, particularly if you're just cutting off one of the numbers. What else do we have? Yeah, another phone line tester. This one's just a little bit, uh, this is a two-line phone line tester versus a single-line phone tester. Oh, we have one of these things. This is a Christmas light tester, fuse tester, and Christmas uh, bulb extractor. These things are actually pretty darn handy because with, well, with LED Christmas lights, they're in sections and there's not a whole, I found it does not work as well on LED as it does on traditional Christmas lights, traditional Christmas lights, this thing works great because you can go along and it will detect, basically it will detect a dead end cable. And as soon as you get to the point where the light turns off, you know, that's the burned out bulb really can be a pretty handy little device. This is one of those little advanced USB power uh, analyzers that has the color dot matrix screen on it. Thought this was pretty cool. A bomb timer. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I did, do see the comments, so if you want to ask me some oddball question, now is probably a good time. This is not going to be a hour long live stream, that's for sure. Oh yeah, this is like an old SIM card reader. I don't even know I have this 3G. That's going to be actually, I think 3 3G pretty soon is going to be obsolete. But that's what this thing is: is it's just a, uh, a SIM card copier, and I guess that's all it really is. Oh, I should pull out the batteries. It looks like they're rotting in there. What else do I have in here? This is a more basic type of Christmas light tester analysis tool. I got to get some of this stuff back in here because I'm going to have way too much of the pile. <laughs> what else? I have these little sponge rings, which I kind of like. I use them for the same purpose as these, as the power cord that I had mentioned earlier. When you're working with wires and you want to keep track of them, it's kind of handy to have something like this. You have these little foam things and you can just snap them over the wire and uh, keep track of multiple wires pretty easily. And you got a whole array of colors. And I like this little plastic thing that they're held on to. Uh, what do we got? We got a trailer hitch tester, another basic voltage tester, a super small phone line tester. I have two different versions. I have a, whoop, uh, drop that. I have some serial testers here. One's a loopback tester. And these are actually pretty interesting. They, all these have dual color LEDs. And if you have anything with like, with serial, these things are kind of cool because you can watch all the lights flash as the serial communications are happening. This thing's kind of cool. This is a uh, power computer power supply tester. And it works with just about everything. You can plug in serial ATA power connectors, Molex connectors, uh, floppy disk connectors, six, eight pin. And you can plug either 20 or 24 pin in. And when you plug it into the power supply, it automatically activates it. Do I still have the plastic on this? Oh, I do. <laughs> I don't think I've ever removed the peel on this thing. And I have not. Oh, look at that. I removed the peel. You should remove the peels. The reason is because over years, that plastic protective layer will end up bonding. And then it will like never come off and gets really frosted. So you really got to pull off the peels as much as you may be inclined to keep them on there. And then this thing is some weird game finder. I don't know if it's like an infrared thing. I've never really figured out exactly how this thing kind of works to tell you the truth i don't know if it's some type of radar i'm gonna do a video about it at some point when i do figure out how it works and that's all the stuff that's just in this upper tray for crying out loud i've collected a lot of junk let me get a little bit of it organized back in here roughly My monthly tool budget's a lot less than you think because I hunt around a lot at junk stores and thrift stores. And then a lot of stuff is just years of collecting. That's what it is. Just years of collecting and then 
uh, you end up with a pile of junk. And periodically, I do go through and get rid of stuff. I actually went through all my ratchets and probably donated about 15 ratchets. Now we're into the lower layer. And yeah, there is more. There's way more. Here's the Klein Tools USB tester. I thought this one was pretty neat until I ran into... Uh, I get this out. Until I ran into this style one. This is so much better. But I still kind of like the Klein Tools one just because it's more basic. It's easy to use in automotive situations. If I'm going to loan something some, to somebody... This one is something where if somebody drops it, this little plastic case is just going to shatter. But the Klein Tools is in a pretty heavy-duty case, so I do appreciate that. But they need to put in better strain release. What else do we have here? More a variety of uh, inductive voltage testers. We've got the Sperry here. We've got the Klein Tools one. The Klein Tools one is interesting because it's both a low-voltage and high voltage many times like my flukes it's both it's both uh, or excuse me they're separated i have one fluke that's for low voltages one fluke that's for high voltages so this klein has two leds for low and high voltages uh this is that commutator cleaner so since i have a lot of power tools you use one of these blocks and they just clean up the copper commutator they work amazingly well uh this is an ideal brand and they have just they actually call it brush seeder and commentator cleaner. And uh, they have a whole variety of sizes of these things. You do have to be careful. These things are super brittle. You drop this thing even in the box and it's going to end up in a whole bunch of pieces. What do we got here? We got a terrible poopy tools uh, USB uh, voltage and amperage tester. This was a cheesy one until I got some of the nicer units. And what comments do we have? Oh, yeah. Well, it's a live stream. So anybody who misses anything can, of course, go back and watch it. Uh, what do we got here? We got this U.S. General, which is actually still a current unit, moisture tester, uh, which is primarily designed for woodworking. But you can use it in various other situations. It's actually surprising how much uh, moisture some things have. You, you know, not just poking it into your finger, but surprisingly enough, if you put this into your carpet by your front door or something like that, you'd be surprised on how much moisture is in there. Should test it on cats sometime. And yeah, my cat is still around. I don't know where she is. I can go find her in a second here. Uh, we got a punch down tool for terminal blocks. You still use these because in office buildings, all the networking still goes through phone style terminal blocks. And so these are one of those pressing tools where you they take the copper wire and they jam it into the pinch connectors. This one's kind of interesting because it has. A separate tool that's in the handle and it kind of just snaps in place like so thought this one was pretty nice this is a Harris d814 what do we got else what else do we got in here we got an electric fence tester and the only reason I got this is just because it's a really high voltage tester uh, all the way up to 7,000 volts yeah there's some pretty high voltage electric fences out there and uh, I guess that's that. What do we got? We got more temperature sensors here or temperature probes. Got a variety of these things. They're always cheap, and I pick them up when they're like a dollar. Uh, what else? This is a another AC-DC probe, but the interesting thing about this one is it will tell you polarity. Uh, I don't even know who made this, to tell you the truth, but I thought this thing was kind of interesting. and. Uh, I like the fact that it would uh, tell you the polarity when you're using it. That's all that really is. It's kind of an oddball tool. It's, these things kind of catch my eye. I have this, this Brady. This is uh, this is similar to, where are those? This is similar to these little label rolls that I was showing earlier. But what this is, is this is a whole book of you know fire retardant uh fiber based late wiring labels or electronic labels and this is just how these come there's just a whole book of these just multiple pages of the same thing and i thought this one was interesting because of the burns on the cover you're like <laughs> not exactly sure what happened there what else do we have in here we got another trailer hitch tester 
these are always kind of handy. There's always wiring issues with trailer hitches, it seems. So it's kind of handy to have these testers so you can figure out exactly what's going on without having to walk around the trailer a half a million times and say that the left turn signal works, doesn't work, the brake lights don't work or something like that. I have this thing, which I thought was interesting. This is a IEC plug. So, you know, a standard computer plug to a uh, North American grounded plug. I thought that was kind of interesting that it's just an adapter to plug into the wall and it just has this. You can take big old power bricks and just plug this into it and have a giant power brick sticking out of the wall. What else do I have in here? I have this. I don't even know what the heck this is for, but picked it up because I knew it was some kind of, I think, networking test equipment. Now, that's what it is. So this allows you to take RJ45, like Ethernet cables. You can plug it into this, and what it does is it breaks out each wire into a connector so that you can easily do diagnostics. So it's a through. You plug one cable in here, the, another one through this, so it goes in between, and then you can just probe any of those connections nice and easy. So kind of an interesting tool. What do we got here? Another total dissolved solids meter. What is this? This is yet another temperature gauge, temp temperature probe. I think this is a European made one. Kind of an oddball funky unit. Super huge with a tiny little screen. What else do I have in here? I have a tape head demagnetizer, which are kind of handy. If you really want to demagnetize something, these demagnetizer tools work really, really well for, getting, for doing that. Uh... Another inductive voltage tester, but this is a Zircon. This is more designed uh, for under wall use, although more any modern uh, stud detector will have a built-in wire, live wire detector, but this is a dedicated unit. You just go across the wall and then it can help identify if you have live wires. So if you're drilling a hole or something, you don't shock the beans out of yourself. What else do I have in here? Oh, this is a cheesy Harbor Freight moisture meter. Does not work as well as this. Where is my other one that I had? There we go. This U.S. General one I like a lot better. It seems to be a lot more sensitive than this Sentec one. I may make a video comparing both of these. What else do I have? This is for phone lines, and this is the same thing. This allows you to plug a phone line into it. It's also a Harris, which I think is the same brand as... No, this is CM1. Uh, same thing. Plug in the phone line and it breaks out all the phone wires so that you can easily uh, plug a multimeter or whatever you're into. Plug what, <laughs> whatever you want and uh, have easy access to the terminals. Always thought these were neat because they just make it so much easier. We have, oh yeah, I forgot. This is one of those microwave leakage detectors. So if you're ever... Radio Shack used to sell them because lots of old microwaves, the doors just didn't shut very well on them. And you would actually have quite a bit of microwave radiation actually leaking out around the edge of the microwave. I actually have an old microwave from like 1984, but it's it weighs 85 pounds. And it's uh, uh, not made like they used to, convection oven quasar. I've used this tool on it, and I can not even get the needle to move. But these things, actually, they sold quite a bit of them. For a while there, people were really worried about getting irradiated from their microwaves. And so Radio Shack was selling these uh, detectors, which is all it is is a 2.45 gigahertz radio detector. What else do we have in here? Even more temperature uh, tools. Uh, I have a little set of Noid lights, which I believe are testing uh, General Motors Oh, this isn't. For, this is for everything. We got General Motors, Geos, Bosch's. So this is just what these are. Is you plug these into the wiring harness for a fuel injector to make sure that the computer is telling the fuel injector to attempt to fire, and so it helps you diagnose misfire issues because it lets you know that either the injector is not even being activated, or that the computer is telling the injector to activate. Maybe there's a problem with the injector itself, whether it's clogged or whether it's actually not opening and closing. That's what Noid lights are for. I, they are incandescent. My understanding is the reason that the, these are incandescent is because a lot of computers 
I uh, don't like LED ones because they don't have enough resistance. So an incandescent one kind of provides an artificial load because a fuel injector is just a solenoid. It's an electromagnet that moves a metal valve. What else do we have in here? Oh, I have another one of these uh, ideal wall trace tools, but this is a beat up one. I think both of these are exactly the same unit. They are. So I found a nice one. So this is what ends up happening when I do that. This old beat up one, I'm going to end up just re-donating. What do we have here? We have like a little basic handheld metal detector. This was from Harbor Freight. I don't know if Harbor Freight even sells this anymore, but it can be kind of handy in a few certain situations. I have a suicide cord. You actually need these in certain situations uh, that you just need to be able to have access to easier access to the terminals coming out of a wall. And they're called a suicide cord uh, for the obvious reasons, because, you know, you have a plug with exposed terminals. So the safe thing that you have to do when you make one of these is you need to have the two connectors offset so they can't physically contact each other. The reason I have this is because I have this Scotch track circuit tracer. The problem is, is this this is actually a pretty good circuit tracer, the Scotch track, but it doesn't have a cord. It just has these two things. So I have to you have to use something like this and be able to connect it to the scotch track in order to be able to use it. And then here's the wand for the scotch track circuit tracer. Really works pretty well. I have one of these uh, kilowatt P3s. It's, it's amazing how many YouTubers, big time, even like Linus Tech Tips and stuff, <laughs> uses exactly one of these, these kilowatt P3s. They've actually become so popular that if you go online, there's all sorts of like forums where people just totally modify the the tar out of these things but they are kind of handy when you want to plug something in and see how much power something's using it's not such a big deal but in some situations it can help you prevent from overloading a circuit they're kind of more intended for you to either plug into your whole stereo setup or maybe plug your refrigerator into it to try to determine you know what in your house is really sucking down the most power obviously if you you know, have an air conditioner or something going, you know, that's going to use a lot of power. But a lot of things you'd be surprised, like a stereo system, even though everything's on standby, if you plug everything in, you know, if you add up the TV, the receiver, the subwoofer and all that stuff, you're like, wow, even on standby, it's sucking down two or 300 watts. And you may want to actually physically turn off the power strip or whatever it's connected into. What we got here, we have a analog AC line voltage monitor. <laughs> kind of funky but i do like that it's analog because it allows you to see voltage drops that pretty easily and last but not least i have a digital version of a power line monitor but this also does diagnostics kind of does the same thing that one of these does but also displaying voltage in a nice easy to read digital display let me read some of the comments here Oh, if you don't know who uh, Linus is, don't worry about it. He's the biggest computer channel on YouTube, uh, Linus Tech Tip. Actually, not that many questions. Anyway, uh, don't have a lot else to show. This is just my first experiment into a live stream and also gave me an opportunity to kind of dig through, maybe sort out some of the stuff that I have in here that I really probably shouldn't be holding on to. And just kind of showing a general variety of just kind of electrical test and utility tools. I think I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream today, but uh, I'll end up doing future live streams, maybe like when I do a tool teardown. And I'll try to limit them to maybe Sunday where it's easier. But I figured midweek is the best time for a first live stream just to try to uh, figure out how it works and see how it works and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I really appreciate everybody who has turn, tuned in and the few, the few comments that I got. And I do look forward to, I guess, talking at you in the, in the next videos. Um, and please feel free to comment anytime. Anyway, see you all later.